everyone so today I thought I will just have a little play around in this book which I think quite a few of you actually requested um, to see a play around and um, so this is the Sarah Simon uh, the mint gardener latest book which I have done a review on my channel so I'll try to link it up here and it's called watercolor workbook it's got 30 minute beginner botanical projects uh, on premium watercolor paper and there is a total of 25 projects on 200 gsm uh, paper which is a little bit textured so i'll bring it up to you just to show you that's the texture of it and uh, this is my first time having a go in this book um there's first part of this book with sort of uh, information and that has different paper to it so it's got this kind of more common uh, paper for a book so less thick and it goes through all the here is Sarah herself she's a lovely she's the most uh, friendliest um, <laughs> artist I have ever met in terms of like social media um, she's super super quick to respond and just so so super friendly um, so yeah anyway this is her book so what I thought I'll do is I'll just kind of follow uh, the um, instructions here a little bit and if you're a total beginner of course uh, you know you can just follow exactly every step I think if you're a little bit seasoned you would probably take certain aspects from the instructions and then kind of do your own thing maybe as well so here is the recommendation for the brush sizes which is round four I have gone through my brushes and pulled out some so just to show you that it really depends on the brand that you could get a round four and have a slightly different brush uh, situation so i've got silver black velvet i've got a princeton neptune and i've got jackson's kite so if you can see the smallest out of them would be probably the uh, silver black velvet um i mean Silver Black Velvet and Princeton and Neptune, they're very, very comparable. They're kind of almost identical. I'd say the Black Velvet goes to a finer point when it's wet, as all of the brushes do. And then um, Neptune holds a really good amount of water. They're like superb synthetic hair. Um, brushes super super soft and this is the um, the new brushes that Jackson's came out with it's the synthetic Kalinsky um, fiber so if you're new to Kalinsky they're famous for their sable hair bristles and so they're super soft and deemed as the high quality of a bristle um, and then this is the synthetic version of it so of course they're not going to be like the real sable hair because they are synthetic but they're meant to resemble um, the element of softness of sable hair however have the benefit of um, synthetic snapback so it means that you will have more control over so if you ever painted with a hundred percent sable hair brush you know you would know that they're um, so soft it's hard to kind of uh, do details with them they're great for loose and bigger washes and bigger projects but um, yeah if you wanted to have a bit more con control and be able to do details as well with your brush the kite brushes are a good um, good option and you can see it's uh, definitely bigger than the other three it's longer in fact it reminds me quite a bit on the in terms of its length, I'm trying to find this brush here. So another size I have here is a size 8 and you gain, again you can see how long it is. So if I just show you my size 8 and size 12 in the Princeton Velvet Touch, the kind remind me slightly on the Velvet Touch. They don't come to this um, point. Um, that the Princeton Velvet Touch has but the length of the bristle you can see it's fairly comparable I mean we have 
the eighth here to compare side by side and you can see that the kite is actually longer. It's also a bit thicker as well when it comes to the tip so you, you're not going to get this amazing tip as you get with the velvet touch but they're definitely long bristled and uh, so that's the four and you can see that the eight kite or the kite round eight it's about half a centimeter shorter than the 12 Princeton Velvet Touch, so really long. Um, yeah, so let's use the kite brush for today. Comfortably, I think I'd go for something bigger because I think the petals would allow, um, I would naturally go for a brush of this size, like a Tan Zero Raven by Jackson, so you can see I mean, lengthwise, it's almost the same, just a tiny bit longer, but it's it's holding quite a bit more um, water. So, I don't know. I'll go with this brush as it's recommended. But the other fours, they're definitely, I mean, these, they just would be too small for me to work on this. It probably depends also what you're used to, like what sort of size uh, of a brush you're used to work with. So, apart from that, you'll need some colors. Now, the color palette is quite simple here. So, it's got a blush, Payne's Gray, and Brunch. So, you'll notice that Payne's Gray is a ready uh, available mix. It's a convenient mix, which is ultramarine uh, blue with a bit of lamp black, is it? What is PB? PBK9. Let me see. Yes, so PBK9, no, um, PBK9 is actually ivory black. So that's a non vegan black. I think PBK6 would be a great option. It would be a um, lamp black in that case. Okay, so basically, we need a black and ultramarine blue to mix up our paints gray. And then the other two colors, they are blush and brunch. So there's a color recipe at the bottom of this page, like in every project, and it tells you here. So for blush, you'll need 50% white, 30% yellow ochre, 20% alizarin crimson. Now I have picked a couple of things. I'll um, pull out the white in a minute, but I have yellow raw ochre by Schminke. I want to kind of use another substitute. This is not really um, alizarin crimson like perfect substitute because of the pigment uh, but it will do it's a pink and I I'm certain I can mix up a lovely peach because that's what we're after we, you can you know you can um, look through your pigments and it doesn't have to be that exact color you can find something to match um, you know uh, close enough okay and then for the brunch it says here yellow ochre so we'll use this color again then we'll need so 40% of yellow ochre 50% of burnt sienna which I have and then 10% of ivory black so ivory black I only have in palettes so if you're new to watercolors ivory black is made from carbonized bones of animals if you're super against the idea, then, uh, like I said, you can um, find a substitute which would be like a lamp black type of a color. And these ivory black, they always seem to be the go-to black, which is included in the standard color palettes uh, when you buy them, like filled already. So this was, I think, 36 with 12 empty. So I have readjusted and added new colors but the ivory black already was in there I never purchased one um, like that I just I think there are more interesting blacks out there like the Mars black etc anyway so without further ado let's start with actually what Sarah recommends to do in this book which is first of all using a waterproof pen ink the design so we're going to Similarly, like what I did, uh, let me show you. I'm going to do a bit of lazy drawing. It's obviously all here, but you want to have the 
um, ink lines just to make it a bit more kind of give it that hand drawn look rather than you just did some coloring um, that also helps to kind of loosen your wrist I find before you get into water coloring so I would start I don't know I'll start somewhere probably somewhere at the top here so I go from top to bottom without trying to smudge um, so if you're interested this is the um, this is the carbon ink pen by platinum and it's got a fine tip so if you like fine tips that's for you so you can see I'm kind of doing wobbly lines here which will look less perfect but more like you know like you drew it basically and um, apart from being a super fine line what I really like about this fountain pen is the fact that the ink is 100% waterproof. There are some brands that kind of say it's waterproof and then you have to still wait a little bit. But with this pen, once it's sort of dry to touch and it does dry quickly, it doesn't you don't have to wait like with others. Um, it's it's ready to go. Okay, I'm just going to focus now on this. This is, by the, by the way, it's a very therapeutic, relaxing thing to do because you can see these lines, they're here to help you. So you're not going to make a line that you're not happy with. And if you want to change something up, you can do it in the process if you want to exaggerate lines, for instance. Not too much, but still you can do it. Okay, so there we go. You can see it looks more crisp. It looks like it was, you know, drawn. And now we're going to get the colors ready. I think I will mix up a black. I'll probably mix up all of the colors here. So let's do this one here, which is Payne's Gray. So we're going to take a little touch Doing uh, these exercises of actually mixing your own colors. I always used to be like a convenience type of a color person. Um, and I still enjoy those colors, but one thing I have learned <laughs> after recent scandal is that I'd rather be mixing my own. So we've got a bit of that. Let's just mix a little puddle. So this is the uh, French Ultramarine which is PB29. There are different, um, there's like Ultramarine Finest, there is Ultramarine Blue which tends to have a bit of uh, cyanine blue in there. Um, but basically you want PB29 and then I'm going to use Ivory Black as recommended here but like I said before you can substitute it with something else. And that would be our Payne's Grey, basically. So right here, this is your Payne's Grey. Now I'm going to mix up a bit more, just in case. I don't know how much I would need. So it needs to be like a bluey grey. Not too much blue, not too much grey. Let's say we're good here. 
maybe even a touch more of the black. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good mix, in my opinion. So I could try it just at the bottom to see. Yeah, so that's a perfect Payne's grey right here. Okay, and then we need, uh, let's see, we need blush. So blush is white. I don't have white in that palette, but I do have white. Hold on, I've got white somewhere. I'll use it from my autumn palette here. Um, so I've got white here and then we also will need yellow um, ochre and alizarin crimson so let's just get some of this white out. So it says 50% and then you want kind of a bit of yellow ochre, a bit of alizarin crimson. quite a grey day outside today so it's perfect for filming the light doesn't jump up and down okay I might need some of it later or just to add later but we'll see so I've got now yellow ochre which is in my case yellow raw ochre PY42 slash PY43 so it's a two pigment color and I won't need that much of it let me just put it here and then I'll need a bit of the pink as well so I'll just add a bit. So to mix up the right color, let's just start with a bit of yellow ochre into the white and a tiny bit of the pink. And then we'll just keep on mixing until we get the right color. So this is the color we want. We want to blush as a reference point. So this is too pink. I'm going to neutralize it with a bit of yellow. Once we get to the right hue, oh gosh, this is such a beautiful color. Look at that. This is the perfect blush color and it's very, very similar now in hue to what we need. So I'm going to go and add more white just to lighten it. So I definitely need a bit more of the ochre. It's still on a pink side. That's a very pretty color. Quite happy with it, but I will still add a bit more of the white. This much, okay. That's the right color in my opinion. It's interesting, as soon as I add the white, it still keeps going into the pink peach, so I'll just add a bit more of the yellow ochre to warm it up. Like so, I think that's a good color here. Okay. And then, as for the third color, we need yellow ochre, burnt sienna and ivory black, right. So 40% yellow ochre and into that burnt sienna. I don't think we need too much of this color so So into that you want to add a bit of water and then ivory black again 
I'll probably add that at the end. First, I want burnt sienna, which uh, burnt sienna. I mean, PBR seven. Let me see where I can. I think I'm going to add maroon brown. Why not? It's a new color I bought and I want to use it. It's sort of like a burnt sienna. So about yay much. So it says 40 yellow ochre, 50 burnt sienna. So it should be a touch more of the burnt sienna. This is probably the right kind of consistency. I will add a bit more water. And now at this point, I will add the black, the ivory black. Oh, I forgot to swatch the um, peach color here, but we'll do that in a minute. All right, so just 10% it says. So not that much, maybe that was a bit too much. Yeah, that was a little bit too much. So, I will, actually, now it looks perfectly right. Let's watch it. Yeah, I think it looks right. It looks just like the swatch over here. Okay, yeah, that's a good match. And then let's watch this one quickly too. And then we can start. So we've got our colors ready, which is a fun exercise to prep everything and having a little bit of fun of mixing rather than just going ahead and squeezing things from the tube. And it probably is already a long, <laughs> long part one. So we will start painting in part two. So see you there.